What's up everyone, Beast Mode back here with another video. So I want to do a quick video today. I'm just going to cover my uh, War League match versus Rognock. Most of you have heard of the player, probably the best frog player on the planet. Um, and this is what I actually played that week. I don't typically play instant zombies, as you guys know. I usually am on offering. I will cover my top 8 tournament run in the um, ENT collectible tournament that just took place last weekend i made top eight not with this deck but with an offering build which is very similar to the others um side deck's always different so i'll cover that hopefully tomorrow i get the video done i will just do a quick deck review and we will cover some of the matches and um talk a little bit about the deck but today uh this is my war league deck that i played a couple weeks ago uh versus rognock so of course we don't know who we're playing against it's all random but i know they have a couple frog players on their team and for whatever reason i just cannot beat rog i played them up two or three times i don't think i've beaten them and i just kind of was sick of playing offering zombies in war league everybody knows it's coming and um not that this is drastically different it's still zombies um but this has a better matchup into frogs i felt um, just because of how fast it can be with the instant fusion, you can really start ripping the hand with the, the Reaper and the Urbellum. Um, as you can see, the side deck, I think I switched a few cards in the list, but um, Smashing Ground just because the Rog was on that Titanio build. Um, and it's pretty clear that I know what he's on. He knows what I'm on for the most part. Well, he knows I'm playing zombies. He didn't know I was on instant fusion, but um, there are a couple cards here in the main deck that um looking at it now again you're not i'm not guaranteed to play against a frog player so you have to have some other um you know cards in the deck for a potential black wing or buy you so there are a couple trap stuns which was fine the problem is here there's not really a clear way to out a light and darkness dragon which was a bit of an oversight not in the main board anyway aside from maybe a um, bottomless and then you could kind of do the Caius play to, to drop it down and then run it over but sideboard has a couple other options but anyway we'll get into the match real quick and um keep in mind i don't really play this deck often i don't remember the last time i played instant zombies but um we're gonna hop into it now i think i did get to go first which is a very good advantage especially against this deck um and when you open dust shoot it's really strong so we're just gonna throw through this and we will see the fact that we are gonna dust shoot so i'll keep the hand revealed of course because we're gonna see it all here um it was a tough choice between them all and i think i picked the lone fire yes yeah, finally picked the lone fire so i know the whole hand here obviously um wing blast is the only thing that can really stop this play so we're going to check for it and um we get one but we know we have the trap sun so it doesn't matter if it's regeki break or wing blast there um so trap sun is actually really good against the discard traps like surprisingly good um because of that like it's just a straight minus one and they often hold it to stop big plays like this so you can really um catch them off guard so trap sun is was better than dust tornado i feel like in this matchup here but um i don't even know what this thing is but i made it because urbellum was useless we also get to do the normal summon so that's one of the strong um like strong points of this deck right that you you may only be able to make one synchro in a turn with it typically because of the of the play with the instant or the emergency teleport you make one synchro so it's not as explosive as the diva build of course but you also get to do your normal summon after so that makes it really really strong um of course the place triple book of life too so you can always bring back the reaper on the nightmare if you do happen to make that so we get to rip a card out with reaper we hit the mirror force so that's like best case scenario now because we know that they have to spend at least rog has to spend at least the regeki break to stop this um so we are just and, and again how you beat frogs is especially when you have nearly perfect information and you know mirror force is gone like you have to just slam you have to try to beat them as fast as you can um when you're in aggressive position that's why black wings is pretty good against frogs because of how aggressive the deck can be um and same thing with value like value can can play against frogs especially game two and three but because you can just drop a board of monsters and really just put a lot of pressure on them where this deck takes a couple turns to set up especially with swap frog and everything so um but once they get rolling it's so hard to be if they can do block you and everything it's it's going to be difficult to uh to win the game so that reaper discarded mirror force and essentially discarded karma cut and regeki break so that just goes to show you like this is probably the best card that a normal zombie deck has against frogs especially turn one well or going second because they summon swap they ditch the treeborn and then you summon reaper um so that's really strong but the the bonus of instant fusion or instant zombies is the fact that you can play the reaper on the nightmare as well and urbellum so you can really there's a, a, a really good amount of hand control in this deck which frogs have a tough time dealing because they typically just like summon swap and pass um so you can take advantage of that in the early game 
So we are just slamming. Like, this is never a good play to, to tribute a Pyramid Turtle, but, like, against Frogs, all rules go out the window. You just slam and play and try to win as fast as you can. Um, game two, things get a little dicey. Um, I probably did not navigate this the best uh, due to, like, inexperience versus, A, this particular deck I never played against the plant version, and, B, um, the the way this deck build, plays. It doesn't play a lot of traps, which, if you've seen my offering build, um, there's, like, 17 traps in that deck. This deck plays, like... I don't know. We saw nine, but maybe only two of them are real defensive traps. So, um, you know, we're going to take the plus there. If that's not a real thing, you know, a real card, then we get the um, dandelion off the field with no tokens. Um, and we're just playing here. So, I, you know, the argument is, do you slam Caius there? And that, that did cross my mind, but I feel like fossil diners are so strong that if you can keep it on the board, you may be in, in a winning position. And then, you know, obviously this is probably a dupe, which is my guess. Um, I'll take the 800 damage to find out what it is, and then maybe next turn we brain control and then do a Kai's play. So um, you can't, I guess you can't play like a complete maniac the whole time and just slam everything. But um, especially if it's a Dyna, I think that card is just more valuable on the field. Um, our, this actually just walls it out. So this is actually pretty funny here because I hit a dupe. So I'm pretty sure that he wanted to dupe block me here. Um, but because I hit one of the dupes, he can't do <laughs> Uh, he couldn't do it. So this is like the one time the mill effect is actually decent. Typically, this is trash. Um, I don't know why it has that effect. It never really works out favorably. Usually, you hit the card you never want to mill. It seems to happen all the time. Um, so here is a flip-flop frog. I could have... I think here I played too passive. I think here I should be doing instant fusion, like slam Kai's plays here. I think without a doubt, that's what I should be doing. The two back row kind of... Um, I was hesitant because of that. I figure like if there's a torrential mirror force, I can just put two floaters down and he's going to have no choice, but to mirror force or torrential here. Well, he probably wouldn't torrential, but mirror force, if he wants to keep frogs alive, um, was kind of my thought, but obviously it's easy to say that now because I know all the cards, but, um, I felt like this was a, not a bad trade at all here. We did hit a Caius again. So we got two good hits this game, but this wasn't a bad trade. We wiped out two monsters and of course they have the flip flop frog, but uh, it's not very threatening right now. So we lose both, not terrible. Um, so again, right here is another time I could instant fusion or even brain control and sack for Caius, but um, I'm just wiping out frogs here because there's no, I have no pressure. Like flip flopping around, returning goblin zombies is not really doing anything to me as long as I'm able to out a monster every turn, which I'm doing. So like, um, and we hit a book, so we've hit another decent card. Um, and we just discard plague. So we don't want to set anything here. We haven't set a card yet. Like, there's no real reason to set Instant Fusion just to keep Plague in hand because now if one of these cards are Dust or MST or Regeki Break, they're gonna he's going to be able to use it. And sure enough, both of them are reactive to my Spell or Trap. So um, I did not set... That's one thing you, like, really have to try to do with Frogs. Don't commit anything to the board until you absolutely have to because they'll just pick it apart. And sometimes they make mistakes where... I'm not saying that this was a mistake, but I've seen it before where people set Dust Tornadoes or they side deck in Dust Tornadoes or um, certain, you know, Spell or Trap hate and you just don't commit to it. And I did cover uh, a match in my last tournament run where I literally played around a what I thought was a Dust Tornado the whole time. It ended up being a Trap trap Stun, which essentially was the same thing. The entire game that my opponent had to essentially go minus just to be able to clear the board so they could play so um again here we go minus one to play but the reality is i'm in trouble because lad is on the board and this card is so powerful versus zombies it's almost impossible for us to deal with um unless you're playing like offering build because you have enough traps to uh perform a chain link um yeah so we're in trouble here um i think i could have done like activate plague four times but that like goes my whole hand um i think right here it's like throw things at the um at the lad and again i set the instant fusion here but that's because i don't want to be discarding any cards anymore um so that goes down to 23 um i thought about playing instant fusion and summoning mizuki and like running it over but that's still not enough because it's at 1800 there so we have to like throw another card at it um it's just hard to deal with right here yeah, and we're not drawing any any real traps, as you can see. I don't think we've drawn one yet. So um, not that there's much. I think I did side deck and compulse, but, you know, we're just throwing things at it. So right here, I probably should summon Mizuki. And um, I don't know why I don't do that. 
I think I'm trying not to. Yeah, so I didn't want to summon Mizuki and run it over because then they're going to get to special summon the Caius or Titanial. I mean, the Lone Fire, which can go into Titanial. So I wanted to just banish the lad altogether. And um, that's what I think we're going to do here. Just look how many cards we have to use. We're still in the game because they only have four cards in hand. But um, yeah, it's just so many resources to, to out the uh light and dark dragon and there's probably i'm sure if you sat here and stared at the cards and everything there's probably more efficient ways i'm not going to say there wasn't um i i knew right there once i saw the second lad it was it was over uh, th there's no way you're going to be able to out two lads in one game with this build that's that there's just no way i summoned this in attack position hoping that maybe when i set this second spell of trap that he would be nervous about um a chain potential chain where the the dino would actually block the um Light and Darkest Dragon from Special Summoning, but he didn't care. He just went for it. So, uh, and that was it. Um, so game two, I probably could have manipulated or maneuvered a bit better, but um, probably due to inexperience with the deck, it's hard to play around Light and Darkest Dragon. There's a lot of intricacies. There's some rulings that um, are not very commonly known. And um, yeah, and never mind beating two of them. It's just not going to happen here. So I think this is a pretty standard start. There's not much to talk about there. Um, and this is never, like I said, this is typically not a good play, like slamming Caius over a turtle, but against this deck, if you don't, if I just pass there, then they're going to slam Caius and remove my turtle. So, um, I, like I said, I think you have to play completely different when you're playing against this deck. You have to, you won't, you really kind of got to slam and, um, you know, you're not going to be able to sit back. Typically I'd like to sit back and on beh behind turtle, wait for my opponent to do something. I'll wait five, six, eight, ten turns. It doesn't matter to me against, against a deck that has to attack. I don't know. We'll use black wings, for example, or hero beat. You never have to do anything with them. They, they have to attack you and that's going to be it. But frogs, they'll just bounce it. They'll riser it. They'll, they'll drop lad. So you, you have to play more aggressive. Um, arguably could summon Krevins here in sync road, but, uh, you also don't want to just play so carelessly that you're playing into, potential like traps like torrential or mirror force where you can lose significant advantage because this deck does so good of generating advantage that if you're just giving it free cards you also lose pretty quickly so it's a fine balance between aggression and some self-restraint those of you who play this deck more frequently the the instant build probably will have a good uh idea of how to do that so we here we're going to drop gores on this big attack here we can save drag i think that the 2400 token is just really valuable so right here was a key part part of the game. So I really contemplated um, switching both to attack position, but the problem was he set a back row behind Caius with Treeborn and Grave. So I was like really thinking that this was a reactive um, like Mirror Force or something. I, I just don't know. You know, I was nervous about it. So because like enemy controller, he doesn't necessarily have to set. He could hold it and then Treeborn and standby take and then do all that. So he valued saving the Caius here. So um, this really took some time. I just said, you know what? I'm going to go for it. So when I see that he enemy controllers, I'm very nervous now about Lad hitting the board because I actually can't deal with it Be because like nothing in here does anything. He's just going to wipe out every monster here. So I have to make a really bad synchro play main phase two because I figure that he's going to get Treeborn and then two tribute for um, Lad, which is why he wasted the enemy controller there um so we make the arcanite magician which you can't do with any other zombie build so that's kind of a cool little thing you can do with instant zombies we waste the token on the caius and at least i feel right now i'm somewhat protected versus the light and darkness dragon as we can see it doesn't exist but you, you know playing around it and this really hurts now we got a brain control coming down um so he's going for game here and uh almost gets there but luckily we have the Trag, which um, offering build can't play Gores and Trag. I actually cut Trag from that build too. So um, it's nice to have a little bit of defense here. So we actually don't have to waste the return here. Um, and I believe that puts us on two darks. This would have been nice if it was not a Musician King and was <laughs> anything that would like Reaper on the Nightmare. Um, so we're going to get back our Android and we are going to go for the return play here. So the idea is to um get the third dark in the graveyard and because i have nothing else I, I have to play here uh, so we can crash and get a third dark and like try to live with a, with dark arm that's the play um so we put the third dark in the grave and then we attack with gores 
we slammed dark arm and we hit a wing blast so that's awkward because that puts us at exactly two darks and this gores is going to get banished but we decide to just go for it and we instant fusion out the reaper which if you read instant fusion it will die um it gets destroyed at the end of the turn so we're essentially just going to let this get banished this is going to die and they are on treeborn and top deck so if they draw a monarch we lose if they draw an enemy controller we lose but they have to actually draw something because we're going to be on live dark arm next turn so comes down to them drawing a light and darkness dragon which is kind of ironic because that card killed me game two but was not able to do it game three um so then of course i end up drawing the um dark arm back again and it's game so uh literally came down to top deck between both of us here i'm sure i could have played the cards in different order especially game two but game three was pretty fun and i wanted to just share a quick replay uh rog is a great player it's always fun playing against him uh if you guys want to see some high level matches like this you should be joining the edison war league server or the beast mode server which is what it was before it's in the description below you can watch all of the replays every week there are 32 teams playing we're getting towards the end of the season and playoffs will be starting soon so you get to see some really great players play um, i will be covering my tournament run hopefully tomorrow i'll start the video it will not be an hour long i usually showcase a few matches some highlights and we talk about the deck again that's the i played three tournaments this year three premier tournaments um, all three with offering zombies. The second one I played was a bit different with the triple legacy, which was featured on this channel. I went, um, I've won, I've topped two out of three events and, um, the two out of three events I topped with were both with scarecrow. So, uh, that will be the list. It'll come out again. And with that being said, I'll see you on the next one.